Hi guys, this is Andy at Shalston Eastgate and welcome back to the Class 56 project part 2. In this little video I'm going to be converting the model to DCC. If you are confident with the soldering iron then these conversions are quite straightforward. So I've documented my method if you want to have a go yourself. As always, if you have any questions please drop me an email. Here we go. Tools needed for this job are a soldering iron, steel wool to clean the tip, some flux, solder and a small screwdriver to remove the motor retaining clip. You can also see here a wiring harness and a lace DCC chip that I got from CM3 models for about 12 quid. Other things required but not shown in this picture are shrink tube, wire strippers and some black tack. I also used a helping hands when it comes to the soldering. On the mainline 56, the pickup wires and the lighting wires are all attached to the two motor connections. With a hot soldering iron, I remove all of the wiring. This is a simple task, but made difficult here as I'm doing it upside down to get everything on camera. What I'm left with are the two pickup wires from the bogies and the two empty motor connections. This is a diagram for an NEM 652 8 pin harness. These are to NMRA DCC and European NEM standards, which are respected globally, meaning the coloured wires will do the same job on every decoder brand. We were concentrating initially on just four of these wires. And these are the motor left and right, orange and grey, and the pickup wires, black and red. I start by putting a large blob of black tack on the metal weights. This is not only to stop any short circuits, but also so I can seat the harness and measure out the wire lengths. I've coiled up the lighting wires here and separated the red, black, grey and orange wires. Red will go to my right rail and black to the left. This very simple diagram is to explain the wiring of a DCC decoder or a wiring harness. The red wire is to pick up power from the track and traditionally this should be connected to the pickups that collect power from the right hand rail, that is right from the local driver's point of view. The black wire is also a pickup and traditionally this should be connected to the pickups from the left rail or left from the loco's driver's point of view. The orange wire, this wire connects the decoder's motor drive output to one of the motor brushes and normally this would be the right hand or top motor brush. 
The grey wire also connects the decoder's other motor drive output to the second motor brush and normally this is the left hand or bottom brush. If the loco runs backwards when wired up, swap the orange and grey wires, the best way, which means desoldering and resoldering, or you could also change the value CV29 to make the loco run the other way if you wanted to. One very important thing to be aware of in relation to the red, black, orange and grey wires is that red and black wires should never share any form of direct electrical connection with orange or grey wires, nor should grey or orange wires ever share a connection with pickups in any other way. You will blow the decoder. So back to the 56 and as you can see we have two black pickup wires. If I flip the chassis over however you will see that we have traction tyres on one side and the pickup wire connects to the left wheels so the left rail. This will be our black wire. I make a start with the red wire or right rail pickup. Leaving a bit of slack I cut the pickup wire to size before stripping back and tinning the wire with solder. I repeat the process with the black or left pickup connection and slide the shrink tube over the soldered joint. Heat the shrink tube lightly with the tip of the soldering iron to create an insulated connection. With the pickup wires complete, we are now onto the motor wiring. The orange and grey wires are cut to size before stripping and tinning. As per diagram earlier, the orange wire is soldered to the top motor brush pad and the grey to the lower.
This is a used harness taken from another conversion and I noticed a small nick in the wire sheathing. To be on the safe side I added an extra piece of shrink tube to avoid trashing my new decoder. And there we have the finished result. The grey left rail wire tucks behind the upper motor connector. And all three wires took nicely in the channel provided at the top and will be secured when I replace the motor securing tab. Before fitting the chip I insulate all other wires with some masking tape. This includes the purple stay alive wire on the decoder. The harness wiring colours match the chip wiring exactly, so look for the red wire on the top corner and match this with the red wire on the harness and plug it in. Across on the test track and with just two bars on the Dynamis, the 56 pulls away slowly and in the right direction. The conversion has been a success. I hope you've enjoyed my video and it might be of use to you if you are planning on converting some of your DC stock. Many thanks for watching, please comment, let me know how you found my conversion and please join me for part 3 where I'll be adding some lighting to the 56. Cheers for now. Bye.